Today, the force is strong with these rescue puppies, Kylo and Ren. Ah, no. And it's definitely on the dark side. I can't have friends to my house because they could bite someone. And adopting them has not turned out to be what their owners expected. The plan was to give these dogs this incredible life with us, and instead they've completely ruined my mom's. Hi, 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 hi. Hi. In West Sussex, dogs Kylo and Wren were rescued from Romania by Sue with help from her daughter Sophie. Their mum was found while she was still pregnant, so they were born in the shelter. It's turned their lives and home upside down. When you're rescuing your dog, you expect to put in some work. What we didn't expect was just how much. Kylo, with the darker fur, is an opportunist thief. If there's something nice in the kitchen, he gets his paws up on the counters. While Ren, with the lighter coat, is the more nervous of our troublesome twosome. He's scared of absolutely everything, and sometimes his fear can come out as aggression. They're so scared of people, they've started to lunge at Sue's guests. I actively don't invite people around my house anymore. Lots of my friends that won't come round because if you see them barking at you and hackles up and they're, they're showing you their teeth, it's scary. There is always a concern that they could bite someone and that would absolutely break my heart. Sue is a keen runner, but that's also fraught with danger. When Kylo and Ren see runners, it's hit and miss. Ah, no! They go herring off after them and then it's they scary. won't come back. Uh, what, sorry. Ah, 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 no. Run! To avoid other people, she's resorted to drastic measures. Sorry. I get up at five in the morning to get them out, and I'm absolutely shattered. No. My life has come to a standstill. I literally pick my fingers to shreds through the anxiety of it. I really, really hope that Victoria can help me. Kylo and Ren had a traumatic start in life in Romania. Fortunately, they're now in a lovely home, but they're really fearful of people, so this is definitely going to be challenging. Because Kylo and Ren are so nervy, Victoria instructs Sue to remove the dogs for her arrival, for safety and to minimise any undue stress. When calm, they're brought into the house to join Victoria. Very nervous of people. Very nervous. Which is which? So this here, this is Ren. Ren, okay. And this boy back here, this is Kylo. Okay. Tell me then what's going on. They both <laughs> are really anxious when people come in. Ren, he has been known to lunge off the sofa at them. How does their nervousness, their fear, impact your life? It means that I don't invite people around as much as I probably should. A lot of my friends, because of how they are, are pretty scared to come in. And as yet, we don't know if it would turn into anything nasty. Do you have footage of them when somebody is around? Yes. <laughs> Ren especially is lunging and actually, as the person walked out, almost made contact. Yeah. Wow. I certainly see behaviour that could lead to a bite. Yeah. That's pretty serious. Okay? Mm hmm Those are their issues indoors. Outdoors? Their recall's big, usually, until we see a runner or a cyclist. They will run after said cyclist or said runner, and they'll ignore me calling their name, and then mm. I panic. Okay, wow. What would you like me to do? I'd love for you to help me help them to not be nervous and fearful of people. OK. As Kylo and Ren are rescue dogs, their full heritage isn't known. But they're thought to be lurchers, as their mum was a collie and it's probable their father was a sighthound. Sighthounds are a type of dog that hunt primarily by sight rather than scent. Other sighthound breeds include whippets and greyhounds. 
Stimulated by movement, sighthounds love to chase, which may explain some of Kylo and Ren's behavior when out running with Sue. What gave you the idea of the split lead? Um, because when I have other dogs, I used to have them on split lead and run with them, and it was easier to control. Right. I'm not a fan, and the reason is, is because these dogs are nervy anyway, but they really are, like, where one goes, the other has to go, they and they're like, yeah. ah, it's so uncomfortable to watch them. Hey. Okay. Now, here you usually have them off the lead, yes? Yes. That makes my hackles go up. I'm usually out at a, a stupid o'clock in the morning. Oh, OK, so when so there's nobody I'm, around. Yeah. All right, yeah. uh, I'll allow you that. Thank you. But um, you have more footage, don't you? Yes, Can I, I see some footage of them when they're off the lead? Yes. Ah, no! Hello! <laughs> Sorry, the puppy. Ah, 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 no! Oh, my gosh, now they're both doing it. When? <laughs> That is so dangerous. OK, let's continue safely. Back home, Victoria also wants to observe what mischief the dogs get up to whenever Sue goes out. Ah, oh, Kylo's coming to the kitchen. Oh, having a good route around. Oh, is there anything in the sink? Oh, you counter surfer, you. I can see you. They're very young dogs. They're only 10 months old. It's a lot to cope with. Good boys, come on. Having come seen on. enough of the two dogs in action, it's time for Victoria to deliver her diagnosis. They didn't have any history of scavenging because they were too young. No, they were exactly. puppies. They were born yeah. in the shelter. So, even though they haven't had experience, dogs are scavengers, and they're going to try and get what they can get, especially if there's delicious food in the kitchen. So that's something that we have to address. What's most concerning is their behavior around runners. Ooh, potentially dangerous. And their nervousness around people in general, especially in your home. Mm -hmm. That is serious, because yeah. what I saw on that footage that you showed me of Wren lunging, especially as the person was walking out and nearly making contact, that is a bite waiting to happen. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you have nervy, fearful dogs. Intense fear is maladaptive in that it serves no purpose. In fact, it harms the dog. Yeah. It inhibits their joy of the world. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it can be dangerous and harm dogs to the point where people give them up and they get put down because they've bitten somebody. That's not happening with my boys. It's not happening with you. Not from your point of view, it's not. No. But what happens if your dog does bite somebody, you might have no control over no. it. The courts might say, no, 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 you've got a dangerous dog. Don't want to get it to that point. No. I know you love them. And it has to be safety first. Yep. Lot of work ahead. Are yeah. you ready? Yeah. OK. Victoria's brought the dogs to a big, safe indoor space for training. But first, she's got a tip for Sue's home that will make them feel happier when guests visit. I want you to put a baby gate in between the hallway and the sitting room. OK. So that the dogs have that hallway, then maybe a room that they can go to and be comfortable in, that way, you're creating a safe zone for your dogs and a safe zone for people. This training is all about safety and sociability, and she's going to use food to win their trust. They need more experience around people. Yes. So I want you to let them off, and I want Ren, because I know Ren's not going to come up to me, to learn from Kylo. Sit. Yes, good boy. Ren is watching. This is in. social learning. This is very powerful. Yes. I'm going to walk back. Yes. Ren is watching, but I'm not putting any pressure on him. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Ren. 
Oops. Go find it. Good. Yes, good boy. I'm going to move a little bit more. Good boy, Kylo. This is different now that I'm walking into him. And Ren's coming over. Sniffing a little bit. This is just a displacement behavior. Guess what? Oh, there you go. Good boy, Ren. This is not a quick fix, no. but look how far Kylo and I have come in a day. I love how Kylo is now eating from your hand and licking your hand. And it's interesting to see Ren watching and almost coming up to you. That's a big step. So I know it's going to take a long time, but they will both get there. Yes. Good. Now Kylo is feeling comfortable around Victoria, the training to stop counter surfing can begin, starting with some simple advice. It is to close the kitchen door when you go out. When you are in the kitchen and you just want them out, I want you to teach them how to stay behind the line. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I use the back cue for that. What I want you to do, you're going to get a treat and you're going to drop it just here in between your feet. Okay. And then, hopefully, Kylo's going to go and get the treat. And then, how is he going to get another treat? You'll probably find that in order for him to look at you, he backs up. When he does, you say yes, give him some food. So let him do the action first, and then we can put a word to the action. Yeah. OK? Cool. Oh, a little piece. There you go. Now ready? OK, so there was a tiny little step back. Now let's wait for a little bit more. OK. Just let him work it out. Get that brain going. Oh, look, again, now do. Yes, yes. perfect. A bit cheap this time. OK. Yes. Nice. Oh, you're getting good. You're getting good. All right, keep going. And as you do it, I want you to say back. Watch that, those back legs. Back. Good boy. Right, that was really good. And so what we're teaching our dogs when we go like that, we're teaching them to back up, which for the kitchen is vital because that means that you can teach them both to stay behind the threshold. Yeah. Next on Victoria's list, how to handle the dogs when they chase joggers. What I saw was just an accident waiting to happen. It's not so much that they are stimulated by the chase, but startled. If you want your dogs to run off the lead, mm -hmm. A, you take them to a place where there aren't joggers and cyclists, and B, you only do it with one dog at a time. I bore you to this lovely enclosed field at somewhere safe where we can practice recall. Now, we're only going to do the recall with Kylo because everything that you learn from now on with Kylo, you can do with Ren. Yeah. To start with, Victoria wants to see how good Kylo's recall already is. Now, as he's going towards there, call him back. Kylo! Yep! Yeah, little pickle. Good, very nice. Sit. Very nice. Hello, let's just sit here. <gasps> Good boy. Do you see how when you were going like this and fussing with him, he was going like this? Yeah. What's he saying when he does that? Don't put me on the lead yet, Mum. Well, no, but don't <laughs> fuss me like that. Don't touch me on the head. Yes. Don't. Just, I don't want that. Fine, you can give me some food. Great, I'll come back. But don't <laughs> fuss me, Mother. Now, I know you've got a foundational recall. But there are some other things that I want to add. I'm going to give you three extra things to do. First of all, I call it the surprise party. Each time they come back to you, they never know what they're going to get. OK. The second is they're going to come back to you, you're going to put them on the lead, then you're going to take the lead off and let them go again. And then the third one, you actually teach the dog to put their own head on your hand so that you can take their collar. OK. It's time for Sue to put it into practice, starting with the surprise party. That's it. Go. 
Street party, search party, on the ground. Boom, throw it all. Good boy. Whoa, it's there. Good yes, boy. this is the best thing ever. Good boy. I want to fuss him. <laughs> Don't fuss him. He does not need fussing right now. So? Good. Second thing, get him to come to you. Good boy, give him a treat, attach the lead. Take the lead off, let him go again. Right. There you go, baby. All right. Nice. <gasps> come to him, good. Good boy. Lovely. Good boy. Very good. Good boy. Great, tell him good boy. Good boy. Lean down again, take off that lead. Wonderful. Yes, good boy. Good Look boy. at that. He was so good. The reason why I'm getting him to come to you, put on the lead, and then you take it off again is because he never knows. Oh, well, when I come to mum, she puts the lead on, but putting the lead on doesn't necessarily mean the end of my fun. Because look, she takes it off and lets me go again. Okay. All right. Third thing. The collar grab actually shows them that, you know what, if you do come to me and my hand does reach under, and I do touch your collar, it's okay, don't freak out. Okay, ready? Call him to you. Kylo, here. Good. That's it. <gasps> okay. That's it, pull it back. Good. Good, so he gets used to that, beautiful. So you've got the collar Boy. grab, yay. I know it's gonna take a lot of work on my part, but there's light at the end of the tunnel, thanks to Victoria. As Sue is a runner, Victoria has one final trick up her sleeve and introduces her to canny cross runner, Lindsay. Canny cross is cross country with dogs attached by a bungee line and a special harness. <laughs> River is a rescue dog. Can you tell us a little bit about her story? She was chucked in a river, hence her name, um, with her litter mates. Um, we rescued her. She's fearful of other dogs. And I saw other people that canny crossed and I thought I'd give that a go because I like running myself. So we started when she was 16 months old and she's great. It's, it's improved her sociability with other dogs 100%. And it's one of the reasons why I think your boys are really going to benefit from it. Yep. With more exposure, being around other people in a controlled way where they're running and they're doing an active sport with you, I think it's just gold. I can't wait. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria's training might be over, but for Sue and her dogs, she's only at the starting blocks. Victoria's given me a lot of homework to do. I know it's not going to be a quick fix, but I've got the patience to do that so that they are safe, my friends are safe. Over the next two months, Sue commits to her homework 100%, and the results are staggering. The baby gate has just changed my life. It's brilliant that the dogs have got their safe space to go to and people can come in and that is just fantastic. She can relax at home. Now the kitchen door is permanently shut so he can't get in there and when he's in the kitchen with me he's not they'll back off out of the kitchen if I don't want them in there which is really good. Back. And no longer fears taking them outside. Well don't have to get up at stupid o'clock to go out with them and avoid people and so far they've recalled every time. Good boy Kylo. Not only that, but Sue and Kylo recently took part in their first canny cross race. He loved it, absolutely loved it. And uh, he's got his first medal. It seems like everyone's a winner. If Victoria was here right now, I would be kissing her feet because with just a few simple things, she's changed my life. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Sue has done an amazing job and it just shows how powerful positive training is, especially when working with dogs that are so fearful, to give them confidence. I really think the future's bright for this whole family. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. See you online.